Nearly 67 million people tuned into the debate, and the surprise star was the man in the red sweater. The internet has determined a clear winner. Ken Bone! I'm your friend The legend of Ken Bone. Ken Bone, you're so charming. The New York Times calls you America's new sweetheart. All day has been a media blitz. Ken's a good guy. Everybody knows he's a good guy. <laughs> Got the red sweater cookie. Ken Bone, there you are. Crossing the Delaware with George Washington. Does it feel strange to sort of become an overnight sensation? Are you famous, Daisy? Are you famous like Daddy? You're famous like Daddy. Scene one, take one. Can I take this thing off? It's it's like hot and I don't like wearing it. Thanks. Careful, it's a collector's item. <laughs> I'm a blue collar worker or started out as one at least. I work at a power plant and I'm just a regular dude. We have one more question from Ken Bone about uh, energy policy. Ken? What steps will your energy policy take to meet our energy needs while at the same I time... I guess folks decided that I was worth looking at for a while. He's so fluffy! Y'all ah. ready for this? My wife never liked all the media stuff how busy it would make me, how anxious it would make me, and she could see the toll that it would take on me sometimes. Not being able to sleep at night, uh, not being able to go to the grocery store without being mobbed by a bunch of people that want to talk to me and take pictures and stuff. That went on for months and months. I'd get up and I'd start doing media about five o'clock every morning, and I'd be so anxious about the day ahead that I'd be shaking. Like, this bad. Like, trying to get out of the shower and my wife would have to help me towel off so I could get dressed. It's not the part about being looked at or being on camera or whatever. It's the expectations that people had. Along with recognition, people heap responsibility on you. And I, I had trouble feeling like I'd be able to live up with that. My self-image has always been very, very poor ever since I was a little kid. It led to some, some mental health issues. That I've, and now that everything's over, it, it leads to its own mental health issues and different kinds of anxiety, and almost like, a, like withdrawal symptoms from, from all that positive uh, attention and praise. Every piece of fan mail I've ever gotten, I've answered it. It's at least to my knowledge. I've, if I missed one and you're watching this, I'm really, really sorry. People would come by the house sometimes just to see me, but more than people that knocked on the door, there were people driving by, like they're doing tours of Hollywood stars' homes in Southern Illinois. I still don't get it. I don't, I don't understand why people want to talk to me. I know it was a neat life experience and everything, but I don't get why it was so big. I guess the whole election season is just hatred and vitriol and nasty things. And folks saw me and they're like, he looks like kindness, he looks like love, which I don't really get. I thought I just kind of looked out of shape. That's why people latched onto me, because I have this look, maybe it's who I am inside, maybe it's not, but I look like the dude that greets you with the dumb joke about golf. You know, says hi to you at the barbecue. The uncle that everybody liked to joke around with. And I think that's why they loved me so much in the beginning. Once you realize that, uh, that your time is over, you have this you have this thought in your head your whole life you're like is this really all there is to life like getting up going to work coming home eating dinner watching reruns going to sleep i'm going to do that again forever 
but you think maybe something amazing will happen to me someday. I've literally been in stadiums and theaters where they'll announce that I'm there or show me on the screen and tens of thousands of people will chant my name and cheer for me and scream like I just won the World Series. That's never going to happen again. So it's real easy to get down on yourself and be like, I peaked at 33, better than peaking in high school, I guess, but uh, it's over. I'm going to live 50 or 60 more years of just existing. So I, I think that's the reason why I'm engaged these days. So I can feel like it was worth it. So I can feel like I still have worth as a person, even though I'm not getting that external validation anymore. This is Ken Bone wishing you a very happy Father's Day. I'm the dude, the debate, the sweater. You have more love than you have anger. Yeah, uh, God. I still got like 160,000 followers on Twitter. And four years later, I still get people like responding to my dumb jokey tweet or once a month or so, I'll get a fan letter. And I say like, you're my hero. I appreciate it and I, uh, I like it. You know, having uh, other people tell you you're great for no reason feels good. Uh, I, I don't really get it. I just do my best to live up to it. And I'm sitting here waiting. I'm watching that turnstile. Well, the circus left town, but I'm thinking it'll come round soon. So I'm going to keep waiting. Waiting on that. Catch this.